Hi, Steve here. Thank you for joining me on the Panoramic Travels YouTube channel. Janet and I went on a South American cruise recently. This video is the second in a three-part series. The first video covered our time on the Viking Jupiter. It included the ship itself, the crew, entertainment, the lectures, activities, and of course, the food. This video documents the port cities we visited and the excursions we went on during the 18-day cruise from Valparaiso, Chile, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and visiting the Falkland Islands and Uruguay along the way. It includes glaciers, Chilean fjords, three different penguin colonies, Ushuaia, the southernmost city in the world, sailing around Cape Horn and the Iguazu Falls. Viking calls this cruise South America and the Chilean fjords. We are on the Viking Jupiter with our friends Dan and Kim, along with Kim's brother Ross and his wife Nancy. And finally, the third video will cover the post-cruise extension, the gateway to Patagonia. That video will include five days in the magical Patagonia region of Chile and Argentina. the island for you, Rapa Nui is the official <laughs> red name of the island. Well, it's so it's Rapa Nui Island, Rapa Nui Etnia, and Rapa Nui language. Rapa Nui means the most isolated piece of land, also known as Te Fito Te Noa. It means the navel of the world. The little dot in the middle, for the ones with good eyes, you see this little dot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The volcanic rock is where they made the Imoais. No other stones. No other stones. Because the stone's too hard to break it, to carve it. This is very special Moai. He has a hat. But actually, it's not a hat, it's the hair. My name is Ingrid, and our driver's name is uh, Andris, and we are going to be with you for the next seven and a half hours. To find the name of this lake as Lago Esmeralda, Emerald Lake. That is how the locals prefer to call it. But in proper topographic maps, it's going to show us Todos los Santos, all saints. So we have to go back to when the Jesus priests went through here, always trying to find the passage to continue evangelizing, in this case in Argentina. So 
They went through here on the 1st of November, the date when we Catholics celebrate the Old Saints Day. For some of you, this is going to be greener, uh, more emerald-like or bluish, but it's all how our brain it processes the color that we think that we're seeing. Because if you collect the water in your hand, it's clear as glass. city right over there and we're sitting to Magdalena Island which is the last house right in the middle of the map
this beautiful forest. To have such a beautiful forest, we need a lot of rain. That's why you can see it is raining. This was one of the highlights of this cruise. Janet and I were unable to book the optional Viking excursion to Volunteer Point, so we made arrangements with a third-party company, Jimmy Curtis Touring, before the cruise. We were concerned about how reliable this option would be, but it was our only chance to see the two penguin colonies at Volunteer Point. We were able to sneak on the first tender to the island. Once on shore, we met Jimmy and our driver, Keanu, who was there a few minutes later. The drive to Volunteer Point takes over two hours, about half on a dirt road and the other half being some pretty serious off-roading. We started the drive at the end of an eight-car convoy. In spite of us stopping for a few minutes to use restrooms, Keanu managed to arrive at the point in front of the other cars. We did witness something a bit disturbing, a sea lion coming out of the ocean and catching a king penguin. I wasn't sure if I should include that, so as a compromise, it's at the end of this video just past the credits. Wow. Yeah, I was thinking up till this point, I was like, ah, oh, regular car, or, you know, <laughs> a regular one could do that, not this. Mm -hmm.
Natalie. Here you are. So welcome. Huh? Welcome to Puerto Madryn. Welcome to Patagonia. over there was the gate which gave access to the fortress of Montevideo. It connected the town, the walled town, to the fortress. So, I noticed that some of you got um, curious about one thing that maybe you can see. Yeah, you can see that woman over there walking. Do you see many people with one hand like this, or doing like this, talking or holding to the bus, while the other hand is busy with something? I want to show you this. <laughs> so, not me, but many people here in the country will start the day boiling water, put the water here, so very close boiling water, right? Very hot water. This way, it makes easy to take this uh, everywhere in the streets. In the office, in the school, in the bus, going to the office, everywhere, right? But what you really need is the other thing, that is this. Yes, what is it, right? It's written really like meat, like like Australian would say meat. It's called mate. It's mate. So, what is inside is uh, Ilian's Paraguayense um, chop and dry leaves, right? Uh, you put it here, you put the water, put the water inside, but you leave some space for the metal filter, right? So, um, yeah, sad. so if they, instead of putting a uh, paper uh, bag to filter it, yeah. you fill it by this, and then you start drinking. When you hear that sound, is that you are not run out of water. That means you need to give it back to the owner, right? Put up here, do it like this again, pour in more water and give it back to the next. Because it's a very social drink, it's a great excuse to start a chat in the city. So usually we'll start talking about weather, that's maybe universal, about last game in soccer, about politics, who knows, right? It's a typical thing. I'm the only guy who doesn't like this because for me it tastes like the grass. It's a very bitter thing, and if I put sugar on it, people will, will look at me and say, well, you're not very family, you know, put sugar on it. You're ruining the matcha, right? And it uh, has plenty of caffeine. That's why people love it early in the morning to start the day, and that's why drivers, I haven't seen any driver who doesn't have the whole kit. So, with a leather bag, you 
can take it everywhere, make it easier, right? Usually, it's, uh, the people have a bag, leather bag, and hold it on the shoulder, and go everywhere with that. So then drink, and drink, and drink, and drink. Even today, that is hot, will be hot water for it. The good thing is that today, as there's all cars, you can look up and see the buildings all around right here with different towers and other buildings right here. We didn't actually see much of Buenos Aires since the Iguazu Falls excursion was about 16 hours long. We were on four buses and a charter flight to get there, but it was worth it to see the falls. Definitely another one of the highlights of this cruise. Security, we are here. Okay, it was a very good flight for us, and now we must say hello to our tour guide, local tour guide, Nacha, Nacha, Javier, and our driver Miguel. Okay, they are going to be with us for the whole day, and now they are going to explain what we are going to do.
So to the right is Brazil, to the left is Paraguay, and we are standing in Argentina. Please leave comments about your river or ocean cruise travels or any questions you might have and subscribe to the Panoramic Travels channel. We're so glad we booked the post-cruise extension, the Gateway to Patagonia, which will be the topic of the third video in this South American cruise series. It was a magical land of glaciers, mountains, and the Terras del Paine National Park. Thanks for watching. As I mentioned earlier, we did witness something a bit disturbing, a sea lion coming out of the ocean and catching a king penguin while we were at Volunteer Point on the Falkland Islands. The video is not high quality. My friend Kim took a number of live iPhone photos. I was able to put them together as a video. It's followed by a video I took as we are just heading toward the beach.